Good morning, everybody. I'm Shuvankar Dhar. Uh, I welcome you uh, for the 2017 Data Science Bootcamp. Here is the agenda. First, I will give you an introduction to data science, and then I will talk about how to be a data scientist, and then uh, why now, and then role of a data scientist, and then steps in data analysis, and finally, I will conclude the presentation. So in a simple sentence, a data science is an interdisciplinary field about scientific methods, processes, and systems to extract knowledge or insights from data in various forms, either structured or unstructured. This is a very simple definition. You can start with this. And with the availability of huge amounts of data and software and uh, technologies, almost every industry today needs a data scientist as there are lots of interesting use cases. So this is the picture of Hal Varian. He is the chief economist of Google, and what he said is this, the ability to take data, to able to understand it, to process it, uh, to extract value from it, to visualize it, to communicate it, that's going to be a hugely important skill in the next decades. And as I mentioned, data science is a very hot field, and this is, has been noted at this uh, article, Data Science Jobs Top Glassdoor Survey for Best Work-Life Balance. And the Harvard Business Review calls it the sexiest job of 21st century. Also, both government and industry have indicated that there's a dire need for data scientists for new and emerging jobs. Now, let's look at this picture. You know, if you look at this picture, uh, you won't make any sense, right? I mean, you just uh, some numbers or whatever, it doesn't make any sense. So what a data scientist will do is, the data scientist will take this data, it will be cleaned, it will be processed, it will be analyzed, and then it will draw inference. That's the whole idea. So the art of making sense of data, that's the whole idea of a role of a data scientist. So what it takes to be a data scientist. So in a nutshell, this picture gives you a very good idea about what it takes to be a data scientist. Collect and clean data, explore and find trends, build models and algorithms, design experiments, communicate results, and design data products. This is typically, a, in a nutshell, what a data scientist will do. Now, so what do you need to know? Now, before I go to this slide, there is a very interesting uh, comment about data scientists. I don't remember who said that, but a data scientist must know more computer science than a statistician and more statistics than a computer scientist. So is it a very <laughs> challenging? Yes, definitely. It's really uh, a hardcore data scientist must know all those things. So that means statistics, machine learning, linear algebra, programming, mathematics, including discrete mathematics, uh, data visualization, and also a domain expertise. So these are all the things you know, necessary to become a very good data scientist. And so why now? We collect more data than ever. I mean, all of you agree with me that if you look at any industry, they're collecting huge amounts of data, whether it is um, any business, a large-scale computer networks, a pharmaceutical industry, gen uh, genomics, life sciences, social media, semiconductors, you know, you name it, you know, uh, sensor networks, smart cities, everyone, every industry is collecting massive amounts of data. And um, the other thing is, the good news is, it's inexpensive and available computing power. So we have lots of computing power. If you look at Google or Amazon or Microsoft, they offer cloud services, right? AWS and Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, these are the typical cloud service vendors who provide all these services. And it is also, if you look at Google Trends, how many of you are familiar with Google Trends? It's pretty, uh, pretty useful because Google Trends actually, uh, let me see if I, uh, I think I can show you this. Um, you know, you can search on Google Trends and you can see, if you look at this slide, you will see that uh, uh, the, the horizontal, uh, uh, axis actually shows the timeline, and the, and the vertical axis gives you a, uh, you know, people what are they are searching for. So in a scale of zero to 100, you know, 100 being the maximum, 
you can see, like if you look at data science, for example, and if you can see past 12, uh, 12 months, in, we can also look at past five years. So this gives you an indication of what people are looking for in the areas of data science and how much interest, you know, over the period of time, last five years, the interest is growing, right? So this is also a very good uh, indicator of interest in this area. And then, uh, if you look at the sequencing of the human genome, you know, if you look at this, uh, this data is from National Human Genome Research Institute, you will notice that the cost is also decreasing and most of you are familiar with Moore's law, which says that every two years, the computing power, the number of transistors uh, in a dense integrated circuit, right, uh, is doubling every two years. So that's why uh, computing is uh, becoming cheaper and cheaper over the years. And <clears throat> you don't need to invest a huge amount in IT infrastructure today. Um, you can rent any of the Googles or Amazons, uh, you know, data centers, the, the servers. And now I'm going to talk about the role of a data scientist. You know, typically a data analyst or an architect can extract information uh, from large sets of data, yet they are bound uh, by SQL queries and analytic packages used to slice these data sets. So typically if you look at uh, historical data, they will be stored in a data warehouse and then uh, you run some SQL queries, you extract the information, you, you generate reports, and that's how a data analyst works, you know? But a data scientist, on the other hand, use advanced knowledge of machine learning and programming, engineering, and data scientists can manipulate data at their own will, uncovering deeper insight. So a data scientist will actually can make some predictions based on the data. While your typical data analysts look to the past and what's happened, a data scientist must go beyond this and look to the future, okay? So through application of advanced statistics and complex data modeling, they must uncover patterns and make future predictions. So that's the role of a data scientist and it's becoming an increasingly important for every organization uh, to make some, uh, you know, future predictions, and you will, later on you will see how they can be used to make decisions. Now let's talk about datafication. Taking a process that was previ previously invisible into data. For example, if you look at Facebook likes, you know, so we want to quantify that. And how do I qu quantify the links, you know? So, you know, measure prefer preferences based on likes. And if you look at Google, you know, every page you associate and weight with that page, like Google's PageRank algorithm, where you evaluate the significance of web pages based on links. So now I will talk about steps in data analysis. The first thing is stating the question. The second one is exploratory data analysis. The third one is building a model. Then the fourth step is interpret and then communicate the results. So setting the, so for each of these steps, we will go through the phases like, uh, you know, setting uh, expectations, then, then we will do, we will collect the data and finally match expectations with data. And this is an iterative process. You know, when you do um, data analysis, you do go through all these steps and in the first iteration, you may not get, get good results. So you keep on iterating and unless you get, do several times, you won't be able to get good results in data analysis. So that's why it is an iterative process. So first step is stating the right question, like what is the population of California? That's the descriptive type. Exploratory, generate hypothesis from data. For example, you can make an hypothesis that the height of a player, basketball player, is related to the success of, you know, you can make a hypothesis. If he's six feet and above, then he will be most likely very successful like this. This kind of hypothesis you can make, and then um, you can make some, prove a hypothesis based on the data. So we will discuss more about hypothesis testing late, later today. And then predictive, what data A predicts B? Like if you have uh, high levels of CO2 in a particular region, what is the effect of it related to the temp rising temperature or global warming? These kind of things, questions you can ask. And will changing A also change B? That is like causal. 
and then how does A affects B? That's mechanistic. Now we will go through all these examples later today when Suman will be talking in details about how to run experiments with this kind of hypothesis. And finally, uh, I'm, I'm going to conclude this presentation by saying that data science is an interdisciplinary subject that has growing applications in various industry and businesses. Through application of advanced statistics and computer data modeling, uh, data scientists discover patterns and make future predictions. Data scientists are becoming increasingly important in making business decisions. And finally, data science is an important field with lots of career opportunities. Okay? And uh, finally, uh, these are the three uh, books that I think will be very useful. Particularly the first one, Data Science for Business, I find this very useful. Uh, it's written for a general audience, so anybody can read this book. Um, the second one is a little more technical, uh, The Art of Data Science by Ping and Matsui. And the third one is The Elements of Statistical Learning. This is a very technical book, and it's hard to read, but it is, con it is a basically statistical machine learning and things like that. So these are the three books that um, are very useful in this context. And, um, and Professor Itai Sarun from Israel and Deva also helped me in preparing this slide, so I would like to thank them.